So now, as we were saying, that a couple of years ago, actually growing up, we used to see this movie. This movie that um, would come on comedy like every year. You know, they have these seasonal movies that they play. <coughs> I guess because they think everybody likes to likes to see it, right? Excuse me. And the name of the movie is It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World. I, I forget how many times, maybe two, three or more. It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World. And in the movie, it talks about the big W. There's supposed to be some treasure that's underneath the big W, like a hidden treasure. So they have to find the big W. And it's like, um, like a, f a couple of people know at first, and then uh, a couple other people hear about it. And when they hear about the oh, there's this money, it's like a whole bunch of people are like following each other, cruising through, I think, California or across cross country, trying to find reach a destination. I only got to look at the movie again. Now understanding what we understand about this this, this particular matter up here. Because when we look at this particular matter that we that we understand, let's get this right here. When we look at this particular matter concerning um, the Volkswagen conspiracy, is how the last the first and the Volkswagen Hitler's Volkswagen conspiracy, the fascists, the Nazis. But behind them are these secret societies. Because they try to do it overtly. But, but Hitler basically wanted to do it his own way. And so they had to turn around and kind of exile Hitler because Hitler wants to do it his own way. But the basic same ideas for this. We have the Illuminati coming to America in the form of skull and bones. We have George Bush Sr. Remember, when they took his imperial majesty from the palace, what was the date? The date was September 11th, 1974. Then we have George Bush in 1991, September 11th, saying that this new world order, announcing this new world order and saying it's, it's more than just one small country. The question that I asked when I heard it is, what small country is he talking about? Because the first thing I thought about when I heard him say that, I said, wait, one small, he's talking about Ethiopia. But when I try to explain it to folks, folks are saying, no, George Bush, when he said one small country, he was talking about, what, America? They don't consider America. Ethiopia's not really a small country in that sense, but when you look at big old Africa and you look at Ethiopia there and you compare it with other countries, you know, plus they make Africa smaller than it really appears. Ethiopia is that one small country. See, the date is very much key. That's September 11th. Something... I want to say funny happens on that day. First of all, for Ethiopians, it's a new year, except for leap year and the September 12th, but otherwise it's a new year. This we need to understand. Now, outside of that, it seems as though the Gentiles, so-called, you understand, or white people, or white supremacy, the Europeans, they seem to use, the Anglo-Americans seem to use it in a different way, such as George Bush Sr. Now, his son is nicknamed and was nicknamed what? W. Now, first of all, it's Rastafari and, and into the roots, music, you know, and, and, and the session. And we know dub and W, you know, dub, like I and I, I and I won't W and W, you know, the whole thing about that in the reggae music, those who are familiar with it. So dub is, is, is the, the instrumental, dub is making a copy, and dub is such and such, right? But then... They wasn't using dub, D-U-B, in that sense, but they were using dub, ya to say double, ya, double, ya. But then, dubia is also short to say dubious. Very, what is that about? Now, look at the enigma of His Imperial Majesty being last seen and led away in what is now becoming more and more clear. It's like some of the Ethiopians and others are beginning to reveal what many of them already knew and many of us already knew and were saying as Rastafari and there's many martyrs of Rastafari, Barana Selassie, you understand, Peter Tosh, and I mean, there's some of the, the, the more well-known, but there's a lot of ones who, 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 who you and I and I and I never got to know 
but they were carrying that mantle. So we have to recognize the the blood of the martyrs. This is all revelation. Now we're, now we're coming scripturally. The blood of the martyrs. Because even though they may not be here physically with us, you understand? If we are in the way, the truth, and the life, they are in the metaphysical and the real spiritual world. See, we have to elevate off of this just the physicality. So when Rastafari says, I and I and I die, in the spiritual system of things, in the true Christ mechanics of the King of Kings and his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, no, there's no death, you understand, for I and I. But there is a way, there's a truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this requires a discipline. So, bringing it back to this, that movie about the, the, the mad, it's a, it's a mad, mad world. It's a mad, mad world. And what's so interesting now when I look at that movie or think about it, and look at what's going on now today, and even when they had um, finally, I think, found the W, it was almost like two palm trees that were kind of crossed. You understand? It was like two palm trees um, that made a V. Each one made a V, but then they crossed, and they were, after they, like, followed the instructions and the map or whatever they had that, that led them to the spot, they were looking around. They always looking around, and the camera had, like, a wide panoramic, uh, panoramic angle. And if, you're, if you were paying attention, watching it, like some of the people I watched it when I was younger, they were like, look, look, they can't see the W. The W was right there. They was like, where's this W at? I'm looking for this W. And it was right there. They started arguing. They started fighting, so forth and so on. And they couldn't see that they already had reached the W, but it didn't, they wasn't able to see the symbology in what seemed to be a natural, two natural palm trees or whatever. I think they were palm trees or something like that that they crossed. It was two V's. The trees were leaning like this, and they crossed like that, and they're standing down like right here, you know, running around. Where is it at? I don't see no W. Where's the W at? And now we scroll it forward to, to George Bush, 2000, the election, what happened in that election. You know what I'm saying? Um, some say, you know, well, it's kind of obvious what, what happened. I think Everybody more or less has agreed. What's done is done, but everybody has agreed that basically he was able to take the election because those who were his backers or supporters, because Bush is like, the Bush is like political monarchy in America. This is what you have to understand. They're like a political monarchy in America. Now, if the same things that many of them and many of their, their people engineered playing the False Good Shepherd. You have to see that movie too. Good Shepherd is a is a movie you gotta check out because there's that end of the movie where they push this woman that that was supposed to get married or something, but she she seemed like an Ethiopian woman. Every time I see it, I'm like, but I'm trying to pick up who she is in the movie, and they push this woman out of the plane. Now you have to remember that the time that was taking place in it is it, it, synchronized with this very same time of this particular conspiracy. Now, of course, the CIA is not going to own up. Yes, we were behind that, so forth, because they don't do business like that. But then when you think about the, the major implications of this, now that more not, remember, most people thought it was really a Cold War. It took a lot of people a long time to recognize that these two sides at the higher echelon was in bed with each other and it was just the poor like foot soldiers, the ignoramuses that were fighting, dying and killing each other. Similar to what even occurred in Ethiopia among the careless Ethiopians because that should have never ever happened and would have never happened except for the careless Ethiopians who broke covenant, who broke step. But they did not dethrone Haile Selassie. See, everybody's trying to give everybody the credit for it, but when you look at exactly what happened, His Majesty stepped down off of that. And in fact, some even maintain that even though it was an outside conspiracy and there were inside agitators and there were compromised and traitorous Ethiopians who had already sold their souls to the West, who were part of the inside plot, 
against the King of Kings. Some even say that His Majesty had a counterplot against them. Now, of course, people say, well, we're just saying this. There's a lot of evidence to go through and, and to break down and to share about this. But not to be long-winded on this subject, just to have one say, check this out for yourself. When His Majesty said, is this what you take me away in, this Volkswagen, this Volkswagen? You understand? Is this what you take me It always struck me that there was more to that, what His Majesty said. But many of us either didn't do the math on this. Now that we do the math on Volkswagen, now that we make the connection with Hitler and Nazi Germany and the Volkswagen was the Volkswagen or the people's mobile, the people's mob, the people's mob. Don't you get the meaning of that? The people's mob. Now, Hitler, Mussolini, the fascists, the Nazis, what's different than today? What's going on? Except today, but see, fascism, people don't understand that fascism, fascism, and, and, and Mussolini should be, in a sense, given, they say, give the devil his due. Well, Mussolini got this due to him. You understand? That fascism was able, the fascism that we know today, it was birthed in modern times in Mussolini's fascist Italy. That's, that's exactly where this was birthed. But folks don't understand that fascism, when it manifests in a democratic or society like we have, or we think we're free, we got rights, so forth and so on, it is what they call corporatism. See, the fascism over here is actually corporatism, and that is the very... That's something very, very interesting, you know what I mean, to really understand that corporatism, I mean, who runs America anyway? It's the corporations. It's the medical corporation, the pharmaceutical companies, you know what I'm that don't want people, you know what I'm to be able, or the government to be able to, to, to interfere with its free reign, you understand, or really the sorcery, remember, pharmaceutical equals sorcery. So when you look in the Bible where it says they repented not of their sorcery, you understand, the sorcery is the pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals, the big pharma. Now, are we saying every sort of medicine? No, we're not saying every sort of, they have companies that even call themselves big pharma. They know what they are doing. People will say, oh, wow, do they know that? Of course they know. If it's done, and if it gets mass circulation, if it gets their stamp of approval, if it can sneer and sneer and captivate the people, then of course they know about it. It is their sorcery that's at work. So Ethiopia, this, this Volkswagen thing is interesting because maybe they did not fully understand. They were, they were thinking that, okay, we'll put them in this vehicle because the V and the W, the V, Vav, Wow, Wow in the Hebrew, Vav equals six. Then the double V, the double V is six six. So we'll put him in a six six six. This almost reminds me of what um, suit typhoon. Remember suit or shet or, or suit typhoon from ancient Egypt did to Osiris. Remember what was done to Osiris? It put him in that kind of like box where, in this sense. We will put him in this sort of vehicle knowing his majesty would understand what they were up to and, and in order to and sneer and to trap him. Almost because, remember, everybody said, even Mengistu said, Mengistu said when he alleged that he, he killed his majesty and then he denied it and he did it. But the thing is, what he said, he said, well, yes, we had the emperor killed, or he did it. The story always changes. This is, let's, just, let's just say, take their story, and then we'll dissect it and break it down. He said he did this, right? But then he says that they buried him. They said the bones or somebody's bones was found under a toilet or under an office. And the reason why was so that his majesty would not rise. Now, that's interesting right there. In other words, even though they took over, it was their revolution, they had all the guns, they had all the army, his majesty did not put up a fight, he stepped down, 
and said if the revolution is, 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 is good for Ethiopia, I am for the revolution. And yet, and still, this rumor would get out that many of the Derg, Mengistu in particular, upon the rumor that he was dead, was afraid that he would rise. Remember what Revelation says. Revelation says, behold, I am he. Let's get this right here. Revelation says this right here. Because people say, well, so is his majesty dead? Is his majesty alive? Here's our response, and here should be our response to that. All this is connected with this. This Volkswagen was meant to be as some sort of a talisman for them to overpower. They were trying to use so-called occultic magic against his imperial majesty. And it seemed to be working up until the point that he disappeared on them. And this is, this is very well known. People died because they could not find his majesty. When he went into the Caduce uh, Estefanos, Beta Christian, the church that was named after St. Stephen, to pray, and he, he didn't come out, and so some priests, I think four priests came out, and they shot those priests dead. Everyone knows this story. Everyone knows this. this is, I think there's even a plaque there that commemorates these four priests who were shot to death because they could not give the Derg or the soldiers that were guarding his imperial majesty any answer concerning where his majesty was. So they panicked and they shot, you understand, and killed those four priests. Now, everyone who knows the story, especially the Ethiopians and especially people who lived during that period, they know exactly the terms of the story. And the terms of the story is that his majesty went in often to pray at St. Stephen's um, church. Remember, St. Stephen was the first martyr. St. Stephen was the first martyr of Christendom. So this is also a very interesting connection. Now, he went in to the church to pray, as was his custom, and this time he did not come out. So the Derg and the soldiers panicked. We don't know if those soldiers might have lost their life because Mengistu or others might have thought that they were privy to that. And maybe the only way that they wouldn't have lost their life was to kill somebody. We have to remember the madness. Remember, it's a mad, mad, mad world. You know what I'm saying? Because they're under the big W. They're under Route 66. They're under the 666. They're under the mark of the beast. They got caught up in the love of money. The love of money is what? The root of all kinds of evil. You know what I'm saying? It's the use of money. The love of money. You know what I'm saying? Where they would sell their souls for money, where they would kill people for money, where they would turn upside down their 3,000-year-old monarchy, their God-blessed Kalkidan covenant monarchy for money, for money. You know, the only way you don't understand it is if you probably are infected. You see, if one, we all are to some extent. Of course, because we're born in this, in this so-called society. But that is probably one of the most powerful, you understand, um, talismans to break is that love of money. And the only thing that breaks that love of money is charity, is giving, is tithing, is offering. This is one reason why we say we're not going to come and beg our brothers and sisters to do what we're teaching you according to Torah, according to the Metzav Kedus, is only your reasonable service. But we'll remind ones, for example, coming up in twenty in twenty twelve, I and I may have to go on sabbatical, you understand, and focus on other aspects of the work because without the proper support, without us really learning this and building on it as a community, you understand, it becomes a great work for a few individuals. You understand? A few of us doing this particular work. I know there's brothers and sisters out there, and what I mean going on sabbatical, this means we'll work with those you know, who have put forward requests, who have been reasoned with, who, who are, we're in communication with, and we'll build with those, and we'll still give updates. We're still meditating. The, the, the word came to us to consider sabbatical 2012. You know what I'm saying? But Regardless of whether we go on sabbatical or not, 
each of y'all must do your part to support this organization, you understand, this society. I mean, this is very serious. This is a very, very serious message because if this message has been helpful to you, what is it worth to help to support this message if you are able to and if you are able to be a cheerful giver? In fact, this is a high holy day season right now. This is a time that if we're living in the proper way, truth, and life, then we would be preparing ourselves say, okay, what's the next Isle of Day holy season that's on the agenda? Because you know you can't appear before Yahweh empty. You understand? Before, because it's robbing him. In fact, stay tuned to, we're going to have a teaching. I don't know if I'm going to do this next, um, but it definitely needs to be put out ASAP. Because maybe some never knew. Maybe some need to understand, well, exactly what is the right way. What does Yahweh say? What is this really about? How, do, how is it beneficial? You understand? Why is it the right thing to do? So this is one reason why we don't seek to come to the brothers and sisters and beg and ask for money. You understand? Because we shouldn't have to do it if you are our brothers and sisters. You have to understand that. And not even just for the tithes and offerings, but also the building of this society, the building of the brotherhood, and even daughters, sisters, mothers, wives, the building of the sisterhood. No, no thing that we seek to do can be, accompl can be accomplished without the help and without the, the assistance and the involvement of our woman. You see, if you read How to Make a Slave, Royal Lynch Papers, they understood the first thing to do, you understand, was divide the male and the female. You understand? Instead, our people are running around after money, building up antichrist society, building up antichrist civilization, and just giving an ear. You understand? Or oh, yeah, that's right. Or you know, a couple of words like that. But building up the devil system, but expecting to live in the kingdom. You know, you have to decide before you is put to way. Just like in this in this season, the Torah portion reading touches on that too before you is is the two ways the way of life and the way of death the way of blessing and the way of curse so um ones and ones definitely need to understand that it, it, it's, it's later than we think because it's not even about the so-called money in the sense of money somebody trying to get rich off of ministering jah's word you know Thank Jah. Jah has given I and I enough talent that I and I, if we were motivated, could go into many other things and and then have been rich over and over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? From a legitimate talent, legitimate skill, legitimate invention, legitimate artistic or intellectual endeavors. But like Moshe or Moses, we chose, you know what I'm saying, to suffer with Jah's people. You know what I'm saying? With our black, Hebrew, Beta, Israel, Elect, Rastafari, Ethiopian, Hebrew people, then to be called, you know, the, 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 the son of, of, of Pharaoh or the son of Pharaoh's daughter or, 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 or to get a pat on the back from Babylon. I mean, once we were illuminated, once our eye was made one, you know, once these eyes were made one and that third eye opened, you know what I'm saying? And we didn't get caught up in the hocus pocus of Illuminati eye, you understand, and get hoodwinked and bamboozled, because some people just live for that, some people will kill for that, they will kill for the dirty dollar bill, you understand, and one has to learn that part of one's spirituality is overcoming the materiality in the true acts of giving, in the true acts of, of tithing, in the true act of investing in your future. You understand? We do this because this is I and I future. You understand? This is I and I, not just I and I personally, but all of I and I. We have a, a duty. This is what we ask. Are you truly and duly prepared? And we recognize that so many of our brothers and sisters who seek to do the will of Jah, who seek to do the will of the King of Kings and our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are not. So to whom more is given, more is required, you understand? So what 
are you doing, my brother or sister? What sacrifice are you making? You understand? I'm talking about the good sacrifice because too many people are doing the bad sacrifices. You understand? The blood sacrifices, the evil sacrifices. Um, but there's, there's John's sacrifices. You understand? Where I could be doing something else right now, but I say, no, I want to be into this. I want to share this with my brothers and sisters. You understand? I'm not doing this for a paycheck. You understand? But the society of His Majesty must be built, and it will be built. You understand? I just don't want to be in a position like Noah and Noah's Ark. I might be like Noah. I don't want to close the door. You understand? And Jah will have to close that door. You understand? And the time is near. The time is very near. So stay tuned for that particular one. We just want to touch on this when people talk about His Majesty being dead. You know, that's that. That's the next thing people talk about. His Majesty is dead. What do we say when, when you know, how should we respond to that? Here, here's, a, here's a good response to, to meditate, and it's the testimony of Christ right here from our B-I-B-L-E in Revelation. You see, because spiritual man, true spiritual man and true God man, if necessary, can pass through that, and death has, has, has no harm on them, because they are already living spiritually. It's like it's literally like a door they go through. You understand? You have to remember that the fear of death comes from the devil. And fear of death manifests in different ways. Fear of death is also a fear of change. Some people don't want to change because that change to them is like death. Because the old self has to die. So we have to look at that sort of dying to the old self, or even the Bible says mortify the flesh, you know, let's kill that, you understand, the Bible says in Christ we must kill certain, negative, on the metaphysical level, kill certain, on the mental level, you understand, kill certain, and even on the feelings and psychological level, kill that which is not like unto our Lord and Savior, Savior, our Adonai, you understand, our Master and medicine, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But here it says in the uh, first uh, chapter of Revelation, it says, um, And when I saw him, have you seen him? When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, saying to I, fear not, I am the first and the last, I am he that liveth and was dead, so yeah, his majesty was dead, but he's alive and he lives forevermore, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of Sheol, the keys of hell, just like Osar or the Osiris also had those keys of those keys of the Sheol, those keys of the Duat, and of and of death. You know what I'm saying? And of death. This is very important. So if 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 the son, if his majesty says that for him to serve this generation and that generation and Ethiopian at home and abroad was as a father serving his son. Remember when he said that in the in the Oriana Falachi interview where she asked him about death and everything like that? And <laughs> it's so much from brothers and sisters. And um he says that for him to serve Ethiopia, in other words to serve the people, serve the people of God, the chosen Zer, the chosen seed, Ethiopians at home and abroad, and inclusive of us as Ras Tefari and Ethiopian Hebrews and, and, and black folks. You understand? The lost sheep of the Beta Israel as a father serves his son. When you read that, it's very cryptic. You say, wait, you get it, but you just never heard anybody speak like that before. But then as you start to get into the scripture, you start to recognize, wow, the reason why we don't hear nobody, because nobody's into the Bible. It's really fulfilling the actual word 
of the Bible and not like a so-called plagiarizer, like he's just taking a verse here and he's spitting it out, regurgitating the verse. No, he's speaking it as a revelation, a revelation. You see, so the so-called New World Order, Illuminati, secret society, they understand the power of his majesty. They recognize, like Moses was, his majesty is a, for lack of a better word, a magician. You understand? For lack of a, from their perspective, from the way they see it. Now, here in this verse it says, I am he that liveth and was dead. He says, I'm the one who's alive and was dead. Now, getting back to this over here, you know what I'm saying? Getting back to the Capri, the Capri, which is the Beetle, they call the Volkswagen Bug. They say the Volkswagen Beetle. Now, this, the only other Beetle I know now that really comes to mind is the Capri, the Capri. Now, the Capri, if you look it up in, um, um, so-called mythology, I say so-called because people have a, a, a screwy idea. They think that mythology is, 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 is fake, but that's only because of a twist in the language. You see, mythologies are parables. When Christ spoke a parable, he was speaking a verbal hieroglyph. He was speaking a myth. See, some people get offended because they're ignorant. You see, you should look it up and find out that the meaning of myth was changed from a symbolic story using symbolism to express a greater meaning like a parable, like a simile, like an example. We say misale in Hebrew, mishle. But instead, people think it means something fictitious, but that is the new world order meaning of myth. Before the 1700s, sometime in the, like the 18th, the 18th uh, century, no one thought of myth in that way. No one thought of myth as being fictional. They, they thought of it as being a parabolic, logical story, a parable. You understand? But with that New World Order, 1776, a lot of things, words changed, so forth and so on, because that was doing magic by them changing a meaning of the word and everybody believing the change. And even though the evidence of the change and what the original was is right there, nobody bothers to look at it. It's like these signs right here, the VW, the fact that it's 666. And it explains why His Majesty said, is this what you, you, you've come to take me away in? Is, is this what you brought for me? You know what I'm saying? In other words, you brought a Volkswagen? You have to really understand the sorcery and the witchcraft that was and still is being used against us Ethiopians at home and abroad. You understand? At home and abroad. And the repentance of us Ethiopians at home and abroad is the only thing, it is the first step, should I say, the first step that's going to bring this and put this train, Zion train, back on the right track, back on the righteous track. My brothers and sisters, I know I've been talking about this, um, this, uh, the, the, the Volkswagen, Volkswagen thing, so forth and so on. It was just that His Majesty's words just kind of stuck with me. I was like, his Majesty, he made a point about the Volkswagen, the Volkswagen. Like, oh, you're you, you're doing this kind of thing to me, because he understood it. And then, like the Capri, the Capri or the Capra, he transformed from Haile Selassie the first to Albert Kadus Kadus Abatachin. So you can see the fullness. So they did it for one in ten. You understand? But like we said, there's a two sides. There's that duality. There's that duality. The duality is, 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 is there. You understand? But His Majesty, using a synchronicity, he, he, almost like Christ, when Christ went like a lamb in that sense to the slaughter. That's what it says. I am He, you understand, who was dead but now am alive. You understand? So he's made that kapri because it's interpreted to mean becoming or it's a symbol for transformation. 
You understand? It, it, it's, it's the flip mode. You see, because that 666 is not his majesty's number. That 666 is the Satanist number. So what they were trying to do was use their occultic magic, you understand? Because they figured that they've been able to deceive the careless Ethiopians. So they figured, well, we have to also restrain his majesty. So they believed that all of this was a part of it, as well as a way of humiliating the king of kings. You understand? Know of humiliating, and for years afterward, the Durg would show the car, so forth and so on. Yet, the Durg showed its hypocrisy, so forth and so on. But, you know, it already says that the, the, the evildoers are these double minded types. You understand? Know so, they would have two faces. They would have that sort of hypocrisy. But what His Majesty has proven both is that the Kepra, the next thing we need to study is the Kepra, which they call the dung beetle. The dung beetle. Now, it's interesting when we think about the word dung. Dung means shit. You understand? Know dung means shit. In the Bible, it says that I will, I will smear dung on your faces. Yahweh says that. He, Yahweh says, I'm going to smear dung on your faces. So the word dung, which we will call today in modern speak shit, is found in the Bible in some curious ways. Now, the dung beetle, its liberty and its mythology is very, very interesting. What we need to look at is the Haile Selassie Volkswagen conspiracy, right? This Volkswagen conspiracy. Now that we understand this V thing, the V equals six, and and double V is double V is is six six six. So that's what's behind this Volkswagen, right? But now let us go back to our root. See, in our root, that beetle or that bug is the capri. The capri is a transformative symbol. It's a transformative. Um, it's, 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 it's a transformative. It's, it's a becoming. As his might says that peace is not an is. It is an becoming. So we see that his majesty went from being known as Hila Selassie the first and literally and spiritually and you can even say figuratively but this this is reality we're talking about you understand went from Haile Selassie the first to Abu Kadus Kadus Abatachin and when you look at the two pictures you understand when you look at that transformation right there and you think about this right here because after he was taken away basically they would announce shortly afterward that he was dead then we look at this area of scripture one more time in uh, Revelation chapter 1, and we'll read this on the outro, um, Revelation chapter 1, where chapter 1 verse 18, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. You see, Abba Kedus is he who lives, and he was dead in the sense of, Haile Selassie, the first that the New World Order sought to kill him, and according to his testimony, remember what his majesty says, for my part I glory in the Bible. So we see this here to his majesty's glory. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And, this is the key, have the keys of hell and death have the keys of hell and death, that is very Osirian. That is very Osirian. Remember, Osiris, Osar, Oset, and that original family came from Tobia, or what we know today as Ethiopia, the Kui land, the land of the gods, to begin with, to create civilization further down the Nile in what many call Egypt or Kemet or the Gubit. So the half of the story needs to be learned. First, my brothers and sisters, is the history, and then we can deal with the mystery. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. I love you. And if this message has been helpful to you, please help us to continue this labor of love with your tithes, with your offerings, with your goodwill gifts, and with your prayers. And I love you. And Yah loves you. Why? Because you enjoy studying His Word.
studying and showing yourself approved to God, to Jah, as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, Shalom Ras Tefari.